So first of all, I'd, I'd like to give a brief introduction about the um, uh, A in the in the data in the uh, FAIR data uh, principles, and the A stands for accessible. So the way it's been described and the way Force 11 described uh, the principles is that um, metadata, so data and the metadata, both of them, are retrieved by uh, their identifier using a standardised communications protocol. So when we talk when retrieved by their identifier, that's the identifier we talked about last week, so that can be a, a DOI, a handle, a Perl, something that's persistent, and um, that through by using the DOI, handle or Perl, you should be able to get access to the data or the metadata, and um, the protocol uh, to get there should be open, free and universally implementable. So the thing to think about there is that it's uh, it's something that is a protocol which is standardized and used by can be used by anybody it's not um, uh, not something that is, is bespoke not something that's home built or badly documented and the classic example is just HTTP uh, that's you know, the very useful very normal way of using through internet uh, accessing uh, materials and accessing data it should not require some specialized expensive software another point they make in the uh, data in the uh, in the data principles is that the protocol should al um, should allow for an authentication and authorization procedure where necessary so this is a common misunderstanding is that when people read accessible they think oh that means I have to make my data open if you actually read the fair data principles that's not what they're saying what they're saying is um, uh, accessible does not actually have to be open or free but it you you are expected to give exact conditions under which the data are accessible so even the heavenly protected and private data can be made fair um, if you implement it properly implement the fair data principles properly then a human being can see that the data is maybe not openly available but then what steps they need to take to get access to the data and because in the fair data principles they also talk about machine access to data. Um, if a machine goes hunting around and find, looking for the data, the machine should be able to recognize that the data is not open and what steps need to be taken to actually get to the data. I'll talk about that a little further. If the user, so that's either the human or the machine, has been granted access to the data, then uh, it should be accessible through some sort of authentication and authorization procedure, some standard procedure. The last point they make under the fair data principles uh, about being accessible is in the case in the uh, uh, the case in which data is no longer available at least the metadata should be accessible so this is uh, of course not ideal but in some cases it, it it is necessary to actually make take the data down so that could be if consent for use was only for a limited period of time or maybe there's been a legal takedown notice or something along those lines that really um, make it impossible to no longer make the data available in that case it is valuable to still keep up a metadata record describing the data and explaining that the data is no longer available now just to reinforce that accessible does not always have to be open uh, there are clear cases in which data cannot be made openly available obvious example is where data uh, refers to human beings and specific characteristics of those human beings, like uh, information about their health, their income, religion, attitudes, political persuasion, all that sort of stuff. That's not the sort of information you can make publicly available. Um, other examples, and that's also probably worth remembering, is that there are other sets of data. So, for example, uh, um, uh, threatened species, um, the location of where threatened species uh, are. Um, can be data which is not something you want to make openly available because that could mean that the last few of those species are hunted down or collected and um, famous example the Wollamai pine uh, is the location of that uh, uh, of those specific uh, uh, species need to be protected so finally the um, another example where uh, data cannot always be made openly available is where there are commercial interests in the data and maybe the metadata can be shared but the data itself uh, is sensitive well is uh, there are commercial interests around that and in that case it would not uh, be appropriate for that to be made openly available when you when considering making data accessible we do argue to make it as accessible as possible and as openly available as possible um, uh, possible angle there is just to provide the metadata as a starting point if the rest cannot be made available at least the metadata slightly 
more useful perhaps is uh, making it available through mediated access and in that case it's valuable to be clear about how the user can actually get access and that can be through um, uh, by providing an email address name telephone number um, and if for example the user has to go through an ethics procedure to get access to the data then clearly describe that ethics procedure and what sort of information is required to apply for that to, to apply for that ethics procedure so I was talking about the um, mediated access oh, and about uh, providing information about who, who to contact if you want to get access to the data. Um, one thing to keep in mind there is if you are if you list a person or a, a, a person within the organization, have a think about whether that person's ever going to leave, if that's a researcher, if they're going to another organization, have a fallback, have some sort of mechanism to make sure that, uh, uh, or maybe a more general email address, so that when that data custodian leaves, somebody else can at least answer the question uh, and grant access to the data. Another possible angle in making data accessible is make, uh, creating a de-identified version of the data um, and making that public as long as it's properly de-identified and that can be useful for certain data users at least have a better view what's in the data set and for some purposes a de-identified version can be enough. Finally, a good point to keep in mind is if you do want to make the data accessible, uh, plan for this in your consent forms because coming back afterwards and trying to get consent is not easy. Another angle worth keeping in mind, and that's something I've invited uh, Jingbo to, uh, to talk about uh, more, is um, making data accessible uh, can be through various routes and various protocols. And uh, in some cases, it doesn't make sense to have a large data set available through download. Uh, in some cases, it can make much more more sense to actually have services over the data which allow the users to um, interrogate parts of the data, pull in parts of the data that are much more specific and much and answer their requests. And that can be for a, a human being, but especially for a machine, that can be extremely useful. So uh, one thing to keep in mind there, you need some sort of community agreed standards um, around that.